What's up, Lantern fans? It's the Emerald Enthusiast, back with another action figure review. This time, I'm taking a look at the 2009 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive DC Direct Blackest Night figure of Red Lantern, Hal Jordan. So I am continuing my reviews on these Blackest Night Convention exclusive Hal Jordan figures. Make sure to check out the reviews that I have already done. And with that being said, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the package details now. On the bottom front of the packaging, we see this Green Lantern logo that is actually red, and it says wearable Red Lantern power ring inside. We get the DC Direct logo there. On this side, we get the designation of a limited edition figure, 1,500 figures made. There is the 2009 San Diego Comic-Con logo, and of course, in the middle, it says Hal Jordan Red Lantern 2009 Convention Exclusive. In the front center of the packaging, we see a product shot of the Red Lantern Hal Jordan figure. In the background, we see other product shots of the exclusive Hal Jordan figures forming the emotional spectrum. And at the top, we see the words Blackest Night. On the side, we get another product shot of the Red Lantern Hal Jordan figure, and we get this ring hand, which is part of the interlocking Hal Jordan artwork that is completed when you put all of the figures together side by side. On the back of the packaging, we get this group product shot, as well as other product information here at the bottom, including the sculptors of this piece. As with the other figures in this series, we get this cardboard flap that fastens to the bubble of the packaging. On the inner part of the packaging, we see some of the other figures available in the Blackest Night series from DC Direct. We also see on the inner part of the spine some of the symbols of the other Lantern cores. There's also a brief bio of Hal Jordan here. If you'd like to read that, go ahead and pause the video and do so now. Here is the Red Lantern Hal Jordan figure, still mint on card. The wearable Red Lantern ring is positioned beneath him. Behind him is his personal power battery, as well as the figure base with the red lantern core symbol on it. And as I've said in the other videos, I do like this packaging. It is different. I can see where some mint on card collectors would be a little frustrated by the fact that you can't close this and see the figure, but that really doesn't bother me since I'm busting all of these out. And with that being said, now I think it's time to do so. Let's bust this figure out and see what's inside. Here is the figure free of the outer packaging, but still in the inner plastic. And like the other packages in this series, the wearable ring is in this plastic compartment here in the front. Push that out. And there is the ring. I really like the way this looks. I don't quite understand why with this series, they wouldn't do the red lantern symbol on the front of the package here. But that's a minor complaint. I certainly like that metallic finish. Yes, that certainly looks good. And the symbol base is in its own little bubble here. Simply tear that off. And there is the base. As I've said in my other videos, I really do like these. And here we see Red Lantern, Hal Jordan, out of the package and ready to rage. Now this figure has the same articulation limitations as the other figures in this series, but that doesn't mean it's not an attractive piece to add to your collection. As you can see, there is so much to like about this figure. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the loose details now. Let's have a look at this personal power battery, and you can see just by this battery sitting here just how reflective the surface is. Really like that paint choice. Yeah, that looks really good. I also love the way that the inner part of the battery has been done. You can see this translucent plastic, and the piece of plastic, it's convex, so it's bulging outward. 
And you can see what that does when you move it around and the light just kind of dances around it. You know, it really looks like some type of fiery energy within. And I really appreciate that. We also get the stylized handle, and that's another thing that I really appreciate from DC Direct. They didn't just make a half-hearted effort and just recolor Green Lantern batteries. They actually molded the batteries to fit each core, so I certainly appreciate that. This battery just looks outstanding. Let's look at the lower body now. And you can see this is very similar to the Green Lantern figure that I already reviewed. I do like the sculpting here on the boots. I like that you can see these wrinkles. There's the peg hole there. And this may sound strange, but just this week, again, I heard from some other Green Lantern collectors about old DC Direct figures breaking at the joints. Now, I'm not sure to what I would attribute that. I just know that I'm glad when figures like this, really in certain areas, that they have less joints. I'm glad there's no ankle joint here. Because whatever was the problem back then, and again, really, who knows, the plastic with some of these joints, it seems to be fragile. So when you're talking about a very expensive, rare figure, honestly, I'm glad there's no ankle joint. So here's the back of the boots. Again, I appreciate the detail here with the sculpting of the wrinkles. And I love that metallic red. Again, good sculpting on the quadriceps here. Just the only thing that I would have appreciated is I really think that these black areas could have been a little bit more glossy. They could have had a finish to make them seem a little bit shinier. Maybe could have used a little detail back here with the hamstrings as well. But again, we even get like sculpting here with some wrinkles around the hip area. In terms of articulation, again, it's a single peg joint. You can get the knee to move about that far. And again, if you want to get him into a running pose, you can. Let's get a look at the hip area now. And you can see that there continues to be really good sculpting here. You see all these little sculpting points where this looks like wrinkles of fabric around the hips. So I certainly appreciate that. This is what a lot of collectors call a Y joint because it kind of looks like a Y. And with that being said, with this type of joint, you can get him to kick forward that far. So that's pretty impressive. Unfortunately, you can't get him to kick out at all. It's not made for him to have any uh, movement out this way. However, you can get him to step back, and I always appreciate that, especially in like a flying pose. To be able to move one of the legs backward, I think is always advantageous for people who are trying to get figures in certain types of poses. And it also helps if you want to get him to step back into a wide-legged stance like this. Obviously, having that backward articulation is helpful. Let's have a look at the torso now. And... When I first started collecting these figures, I thought that DC Direct had just reused the same torso and just applied different paint and symbols, but I was wrong about that. Looking at these up close as I have reviewed these, I do think that the torsos, at least in the case of like the red, the white, and the green at this point, there are some differences here. Now, I do like what they have done here. I like the way the muscles have been sculpted in. That looks really good. I like this trim down here. This is accurate with the Red Lantern attire. I like how that looks. Symbol looks good despite the fact that, you know, you see it kind of, you know, dipping down within the pectoral muscles there. Here's a look at the back. And yeah, good sculpting here on the Latissimus dorsi and the trapezius. Looking at these side by side, I think you can see some subtle differences in the torsos. 
With the green here, it looks more defined in the abdominal area. With the red one, the muscles look a little bit more rounded, as with the pectoral area here. And you can really tell a difference when you turn these figures to the side. The lat on the green one is definitely larger. You can see how that is different. So I just assumed that they had reused the body mold on several of these, but that doesn't seem to be the case between the green and the red at least. And I'll show you the white one a little bit later in this video. Let's have a look at the arms now. And for the most part, they have been produced very well. Good definition here on the forearms. Of course, I love this metallic red paint on the gloves. Articulation here at the wrist, although I did notice that it's a little bit easier to move this hand than it is with this one. And that could be due to warping from the packaging. I talked about that with the white lantern figure. So I can move this, but it's not as easy and I certainly don't want to force it. Single jointed elbow. The biceps is sculpted very well. The triceps looks a little weird. I've got to say, that's not perfect. Deltoid has been sculpted very well. I like how that looks. In terms of other articulation, like with the shoulder, you can get it to go up this far, so that's a little lacking. You can get it to go around 360 degrees. You can get his arm to go out that far, so there's the angle you're looking at. Again, that could have been a little bit better. Now with the rings, now this is not a mistake, this is comic accurate. You can see here he's wearing the red ring and here he's wearing the green ring. Both of them, as I've touched on in my other videos about this series, I think they're a little undersized. I think those could have been areas where these figures could have improved. But I don't have too many negative things to say about these arms. I think overall they look good, especially for the time period. Let's look at the head sculpt now, and I really appreciate what DC Direct has done here. When talking about the Red Lantern core, we're talking about rage, of course, a more volatile, negative emotion. And this head sculpt, the expression fits that. It's very different from either the white or the green figures. The teeth look really good. I see a lot of open mouth expressions on action figures that don't look good at all. They can really sink the head sculpt, but these look really good. Very realistic. Like the way the jaw looks. You know, it looks like he's clenching it here. The mask looks just amazing. You can feel the edges here. And the paint applications are very exact. And you can see just how different the hair is on these two head sculpts with the green figure. It's the more classic kind of haphazard Hal Jordan sprawl. But with this one, it's just completely wild. And I think that's fitting to denote the kind of energy that we're dealing with, with the red ring. Yeah, that just looks really good. Maybe could have been a little bit more so here in the back. That looks a little plastic. But looking at it head on like this, I really appreciate the direction that they went creatively. In terms of articulation, you can get the figure to look side to side. You can get him to look down a little bit. Can't really get him to look up. You can get the head to tilt a little bit in each direction. So I appreciate that. However, one of the things that I saw online this week was a collector complaining about a Green Lantern figure from about this era having the neck joint snap when they articulated it. If you do stop motion or you know dynamic posing for pictures, I really would not use figures from this series, especially because they're so rare and so hard to replace. So friends, just be careful. So here are the white, green, and red figures together. And as you can see, each one of these differs from the other. They all have unique aspects 
And I know the temptation was probably there for DC Direct to only differentiate these figures with colors, but that's not what they did. And I really like the fact that they catered to collectors, and that's why I decided to buy this entire line despite the expense. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this review, and please tell all of your friends about this channel. I would certainly appreciate it. And I'll be back with more Green Lantern content soon. But until we meet again, this has been the Emerald Enthusiast, and thanks for watching.